Skeleton forts are one of the best ways to help yourself secure some high value loot while playing Sea of Thieves. But while the skeleton forts are usually easiest with a full squad running a galleon, it is possible to do these solo while more dangerous. Today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that I use personally to help maximize my chances of completing the skeleton fort while playing solo and avoiding losing that key or any of the loot that you got in the process. So come with me through this journey and I'll show you how to defeat a skeleton fort quick and easy and keep yourself sailing high on the seas. First of all, you want to know the island that you are on. You want to know the name of it. You want to know its layout and its barrel locations. Everything that there could possibly be of use to you. The reason you want to know the name of the island is if in case you do get sunk because some hostile ships are engaging you, you now know exactly where you got to travel back to. There's no guesswork of, well, I think this is the island we were on. It's good to know the layout of the island so you know your quick escape routes and whatnot. Barrel location, so if there's gold skellies, you know where the gunpowder barrels are, you know where barrels for supplies are, and you also know where the ammunition boxes are to replenish any ammo you've lost in the fight. But before you end up actually fighting the skeletons on the island, first I think it's the best idea to scope out the area. Once you get to the island, you want to know if there are any other players near. So, while I'm sailing to it, I'm constantly using my spyglass, seeing if there's any ships on the way or in a close vicinity where that they could come up to the skeleton fort while I'm doing it. If there are already ships there, it's a good idea to see if they're hostile or not. Sometimes you get lucky and they're, they're genuinely nice people, they'll form an alliance with you. Some people are shoot on sight. I like to keep the skeletons up in those crow's nests alive because the way I usually park on one of these islands is my ship is not going to be hit by any cannonballs from those skeletons in the crow's nest. However, they do give you good information on if ships are coming near to the fort that you're on. Next up is weapons. Now everyone has their own personal preference for weapons, but I'm going to tell you what I prefer to use when I'm playing Sea of Thieves. If I'm playing generally, I'm using a cutlass and a blunderbuss. And the cutlass and the blunderbuss are for sure some of my go-to weapons when I'm doing skeleton forts as well. The blunderbuss is a must pick for me because I can make quick works of the skeletons, especially gold ones if I got them in water. It does not take long to kill them, but the cutlass does take a while. The reason I do have a cutlass on me is for use of hordes or when I'm out of ammunition. You don't want to be stuck with two guns, or at least personally I don't think you want to be stuck with two guns. Fire off your ten shots and now you're completely out and now you gotta run around and find the ammunition. Now, again, that's subjective, that is not complete fact of what works best, I just feel that the Cutlass and Blunderbuss is a good combo for me. Next up, you're going to want to know quick escape routes. This kind of goes into plan with uh, know your island, know the location. You want to know the routes on the island, you want to know the ins and out of everything that you're doing, and especially once you secure the loot, you want to know the quickest and easiest way to get to a outpost so you can sell the loot you have required. You're going to want to know skeleton types and their weaknesses. So if you're fighting gold skeletons, you need to know that they're weak to water, explosives are always good work against them. If it's nighttime and you get the shadow skeletons, you need to put out your lantern for a second and get them vulnerable. You need to know each type of skeleton. If you've been playing Sea of Thieves for a while, uh, it should become second nature to you. Next up, you want to know when that final wave spawns. The music's going to change, it's going to be different, it's going to sound epic. So now that you know that that captain is spawning, I try to prioritize him. Now it's not always possible to prioritize the captain skeleton because there are so many that spawn, but if you can try to single him out and get the most damage to him so you know you're running alone, you don't want to have to fight all these skeletons, you're on the final wave and another ship's coming up. And you'll see that's what actually happens during the gameplay. Um, I'm fighting the skeleton captain, I'm getting the key, but there are ships already on the way, so you can't always avoid enemies coming to you, but that's why I try to prioritize the captain, because if I went for everybody else first, there's a big possibility that you're not even going to get to the captain in time. After defeating the captain and getting that skeleton key to get all that high tier loot, I would suggest hiding it. Now, where do you hide it? Well, that's why you want to know the layout of the island. You want to know some spots that are a little more difficult to get into and spots that you're not going to be able to see the key from a distance. 
hiding it in a bush is typically a good idea, but players do know to look in bushes. So you want to scope out the island beforehand, like I said earlier, just so you know what the best spot for hiding that key is. And there's a really good reason why you're going to want to hide that key. You're going to want to hide it because once you defeat that final wave, you're going to want to scope out the island once again. There's a lot of looking and keeping your head on a swivel, and even while you're fighting the waves of skeletons, you're going to want to keep your head up high and make sure that you're seeing who's coming near you. If you've got any brigs, galleons, or sloops even coming into your vicinity, you want to take note of that because you want to know what kind of engagement you might get into. And that's exactly why you're hiding the key, and that's why you're looking again to see if there's enemy ships or players nearby. If there are other ships or players nearby, hopefully you did a good enough job hiding the key and that they'll be fooled and you'll be safe for a little bit. You want to make sure that they are going to be friendly. Now, this might take a little bit of time. Not everyone talks in game chat, not everyone's playing PC where that they can have actually like the chat pad and all that. And it can get pretty difficult to try to scope out on if a player is going to be friendly or not. They might act friendly, they might form an alliance with you, and they might steal your loot. This is all based on your discretion. What do you want to do with these enemies? But if they do become hostile and they're trying to hurt you, you need to prepare for war. There's going to be no holds barred. You're going to do whatever you can to survive. But if you're solo slooping and they got a brig or a galleon, odds are they have met more firepower and they're going to outnumber you. Your sloop is most likely going to sink in that scenario. And if that does happen, if your ship does sink and you are not victorious in this battle, you're going to want to travel back to the island as quick as you can as soon as you get off the ferry of the damned. Get any supplies that you can in a short amount of time, but you definitely want to get back there quickly. If the other ships are still at the island and they are fighting each other, if there's two ships there, two different crews that are fighting, I try to let them fight, see what they're doing, but I also keep a, a safe enough distance where I can look through a spyglass. I like to see if they got the loot, if they're fighting, what's going on, and then I decide then if I'm going to engage or wait a little bit. And it all comes down to your personal preference. Some players you know if they're good or not and you might be able to actually take them even though you're solo slooping so use your uh use your brain a little bit are they good players well then it's probably not a good idea to go after them let them fight it out let them do what they need to do and then you can come in when they're weak and not expecting it if you're lucky enough and you get back to the island after being sunk and all these ships are gone all the players are gone as far as you can tell it's probably a good idea to grab that key and get the loot, but first you're going to want to scope out the island once again. I told you you're going to want to keep your head on a swivel and that is specifically because some players like to hide. It's happened to me a lot, it's a pretty common tactic nowadays now that Sea of Thieves has grown older. People are realizing that, well hey, we got multiple people in a group, they sunk our ship, as long as one of us stays on the island, they can hide somewhere on the island and hopefully get to drop on the person when they think all is clear. So. You're going to want to go to that island, you're going to want to scope out all the areas in which you think somebody can hide because you don't want to put in that key, grab your stronghold chest, and immediately turn around and get a blunderbuss to the face. But, since you're solo slooping, as soon as you open up that little cave entrance and you have all the loot, you're going to want to prioritize it. What is going to sell for the most? Obviously, the stronghold items are going to sell for the most money. But what do you need for your own reputations? Are you pirate legend? Well, then grab everything that you can, but try to grab what's worth the most first. If you're trying to rank up a specific alliance, then grab first what sells to that alliance. Regardless, obviously, like I said, those stronghold items are going to sell for the most, but if you're trying to get stuff for the gold hoarders, you're not going to want to grab a castaway chest before you get a captain's chest. So you need to know what loot sells for, you need to know what is the most important, try to get a rowboat and then try to get the loot back there as quick as possible. You might have to leave a couple things behind, but that just comes with the territory. Get on that rowboat, attach it to your ship and then attempt to go to an outpost. Now, the problem with the outpost is, is you're still gonna need to keep your head up. You're gonna wanna see if there's outposts with other players. Now this, again, comes down to personal preference. 
I myself will not go to an outpost after clearing a skull fort by myself if I see that there are other ships near it. To me, it's just a little bit too risky. I've came all this way, I got all this loot, and there might be a possibility that this group that I come across is hostile, they're going to try to sink me, and then they got all my loot. I did all the work, but they come away with the spoils. So I try to go to the closest outpost, but the closest one without players. Again, that's all discretionary. I don't like to worry about them being hostile, so that's why I try to go somewhere where it's pretty vacant. And those are my tips and tricks if you're going to try to solo sloop on a skeleton fort in the Sea of Thieves. I hope you guys enjoyed some of these little trips and tricks. Hopefully it's going to help you become a better pirate and secure that pirate legend status if you haven't already. Regardless of your reason for doing skeleton forts, I wish you the best of luck if you're running solo. Obviously it's always best to run with a full crew. Thank you guys for sticking around. I will see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates.